I'm Jim Jones, one of the instructors here at Emerson's Educational Services Training Facility in Marshalltown, Iowa. In this video, I'd like to show you how to mount a Fisher 3582 pneumatic positioner on this 657 direct acting actuator, which is mounted on an EZ valve. Now, the bench set and the stroke have already been adjusted on this control valve assembly. Of course, we want to always make sure that we review and are familiar with the safety precautions and procedures found in the instruction manual of the 3582. Our first step will be to attach the connector arm to the stem connector. That's pretty easy on this direct acting actuator, but if you're working on a reverse acting actuator for safety, make sure you add air to get the plug up off the seat to relieve the pressure on the stem connector before you loosen the bolts. Of course, make sure you then put the stem connector back on in the same place as before. One little trick here is to make sure that the connector arm is as far to the left as possible without touching the yoke of the actuator. That will buy a little extra space between the connector arm and the positioner. Now we're ready to mount the positioner onto the actuator. I've already attached the mounting plate onto the back of the positioner. Which set of holes we use is important. In the instruction manual it tells me for this size actuator I'm to use hole set number three. While I'm bolting on the positioner it's a good time to remind you that if you're installing a brand new 3582 make sure you take off the cover and remove the styrofoam block we put in there for shipping. Okay, step one was to attach the connector arm. Step two was to mount the positioner onto the actuator. Step three now is to stroke the actuator to the middle of its travel. Just get it as close as you can by sight. Step four is to swing the travel pin into the slot of the rotary shaft arm. Step five is to hook up the feedback arms. We want to bring the spring-loaded rotary shaft arm on the positioner parallel to the connector arm on the actuator. We can double check that by making sure the vertical marks on the rotary shaft arm line up with the marks on the side of the positioner case. There are two things that are important on the placement of this travel pin. First, we want it in the slot over the mark that indicates the rated travel of the valve. In this case, our valve has a three-quarter inch stroke, so we'll put the pin over the mark that reads an inch and an eighth or less. Secondly, we want to make sure the pin is perpendicular to the connector arm. Finally, we tighten up the travel pin cap nut that holds everything in place. So the Fisher 3582 positioner is mounted in just five easy steps. First, attach the connector arm to the actuator. Second, mount the positioner on the actuator. Third, stroke the actuator to mid-travel. Fourth, insert the travel pin in the slot of the rotary shaft arm above the mark for the rated valve travel. And finally, position the rotary shaft arm to be parallel to the connector arm. Be sure to check out the companion video on how to calibrate the Fisher 3582 positioner. Thanks for watching.